So here we are in the week following the Game Awards, and it seems the various console wars that kicked off during the show are still going on, because it's not like we're getting any more big games before the end of the year, and it's not like the fanboys play games anyways, so they might as well give themselves hand cramps by furiously typing the same nonsense points over and over again. I briefly mentioned in my last Game Awards video that there's been a rather depressing number of people completely denouncing turn-based games as a whole in response to Baldur's Gate 3 winning Game of the Year, and that stupid debate has just been a fan favorite, because nobody can shut up about it long enough to avoid my screenshot button for a second video. It amazes me that people can genuinely think Spider-Man 2 was a better designed or more impactful game than Baldur's Gate 3. Like, it really shouldn't matter how much you do or don't enjoy either of these games, but if you seriously think Spider-Man 2 was the more important or impressive piece of game design, you need to go back to elementary school and do a bunch of those English tests where you just find the error in people's written sentences because you make no farting sense. Spider-Man 2, while a well-crafted game, is an update of the Arkham formula, while Baldur's Gate 3 is one of the most advanced and elaborate connections of gameplay to storytelling I've ever seen. And rather than try to explain that in gross detail, I'm just going to show you this quick explanation by Momo O'Brien, who does it in gross detail. One of the first missions you're given is to go rescue this man Halson in the middle of a goblin camp. During my all-nighter, I gathered all the goblins by playing a little ditty, and then carefully planned out an ambush so I could attack them all at once. A lot of other people also planned out an ambush by putting grease on the stairs, ice on the bridge, using a spell that locks all the doors. Someone fully sold out the good guy location so they could assassinate the leader once they were left alone. Someone was attempting to ambush everyone, but then got caught freeing a prisoner and had to fight their way out. Someone woke up the drunk goblins and then gave them more booze so they'd pass out again. And this person poisoned the punch bowl at the party. Some people threw their enemies into the spider pit. Other people befriended the spiders and caused a spider uprising, including Luxie Game. Some people tried to charm all the goblins. Other people placed a bunch of oil barrels and then blew everything up. Some of these answers mentioned, oh, I brought Saza along. And I was like, wait, who the hell is Saza? And then I remembered Saza is this random goblin that you meet at the good guy camp for like two minutes. This person was playing with their partner who got arrested and then turned into a cat to go rescue them. In the playthrough you are going to see, I met a character named Priestess Gut. She gave me a sleeping potion. I pass out. I wake up in a dungeon in chains. However, when Brizzy Voices was in the exact same scenario, wait, oh, 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 Brizzy Voices, when she was in the exact same scenario, she was given the sleeping potion, but was playing a drow. And apparently, sleeping potions do not work on drow, so Priestess Gut got mad and attacked her. But then someone else said they defeated Priestess Gut by dropping a chandelier on her. And someone apparently seduced her and killed her in her bedroom. Some people sided with the goblins by accident. A lot of people sided with the goblins on purpose, which means there's an alternate timeline out there where the goblins are just hanging out in the good guy zone. And in my current playthrough, I got through the goblin camp, by smearing shit on my face. And I would like to remind you that that is just one mission. That is one quest in the entire area of Act 1. It shouldn't take a fucking brain rocket scientist to recognize the achievement that Baldur's Gate 3 is, but it's not like Spider-Man fanboys or die-hard PlayStation dudes actually understand this. They want the same game over and over again with different skins and varying levels of ray tracing so they can mash the same two buttons over and over again in between overlong cutscenes and just holding forward in the open world to get to the next objective where they can press the same two buttons over and over again to win. And that's all coming from someone who fucking loved the first Spider-Man game. There's nothing wrong with either of these games existing, but the fact that the Spider-Man dudes absolutely will not let it go that Baldur's Gate 3 was just a more impressive and intricately designed game is astonishing, and it's led to a lot of them denouncing turn-based games as a whole because their TikTok-ass brains can't handle having to slow things down a bit and actually think about their next move. They'd rather just mash the same two buttons over and over again and eventually get to the next overlong cutscene. So pull up a chair, dear viewer, because we're about to look at some more absolute brainlets that simply cannot fathom there being any quality in a game that doesn't drag them along a string for 10 hours or ask them to mash X a million times to win. Mr. Momin says turn-based is shitty and lazy. I'd give turn-based a free pass if the animations were crazy and looked really good. Unfortunately, Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't meet that criteria. Today I learned Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't have good animations, which is news to me. But also, thanks for saying the quiet part out loud here. You'd be cool with turn-based combat if it looked really cool. So basically, visuals are all that matter to you. Gameplay that you don't like is fine as long as it looks cool. Thanks for clearing that up. Never would have guessed that. And naturally, Mr. Man here was getting ratioed back to the 1500s with this take, and someone responded to him, saying, It's not lazy, it's just not as flashy as real-time combat. It's a different type of combat, which is fine. That doesn't make it worse just because you don't like it. To which Mr. Moman responds, Why can't it have real-time combat, though? Why must it use outdated systems? Why can't it be real-time? Because that wasn't the vision. That's it. 
Like, we could talk about how, like, oh, it's a turn-based game because it's based on D&D. Or, like, oh, it's turn-based because that's the best way for your choices to be on screen and have future consequence. But, like, honestly, that doesn't even matter. It's not real time because the devs didn't want it to be. End of story. Why can't it be real time? Why can't Animal Crossing be a shooter? Oh, why can't it be real time? Why can't Guitar Hero be a platform fighter? These games were envisioned a certain way. They can't be a different way because that's the way it is. It's like I'm talking to a fucking five-year-old. Mommy, why can't I fly? Because you fucking can't, Johnny. The, f the fucking good lord didn't make you that way. But also, the second part about this really irks me. Oh, why must it use outdated systems? A, like, a game is not outdated just because it uses mechanics that have existed before it did. First-person shooters have existed for decades, and yet new first-person shooters are only called outdated if they don't do anything new or original or engaging. Nintendo has been making Mario platformers for longer than I've been alive, but that doesn't mean every new one is outdated. Only some of them are. An outdated game is one that does things we've seen a million times before, takes no risks, and is generally just doing things that have been done for years on end. If the simple persistence of a combat system was inherently causing it to be outdated, literally every genre of game would be outdated, because literally every genre of game has been done before. Uh, moving on, here's here's one that I'm pretty sure most of you saw. Visual Fidelity tweets out, Hot take, turn-based combat ruins games and should always be an optional combat method. How many of you actually find this fun? Baldur's Gate 3. I love that. It's like, you couldn't just have your tweet. I'd like You wanted to make sure the people who like Baldur's Gate 3 found this tweet, so you just put Baldur's Gate 3 at the end. But also, fucking news to me that turn-based combat ruins games. Don't tell that to Persona 5 or XCOM or Super Mario RPG, or Thousand Year Door, or Civ 6, or basically every Pokemon game, or most Final Fantasy games. You know, I just had a crazy thought. If turn-based combat ruined games, I think people would stop making them, and buying them, and making them some of the most beloved games of our time. But there I go again with my gigantic brain full of thoughts. Uh, Mr. Reckless responded to Visual Fidelity's dog shit point and said, easier way to deal with that, just don't play it. Some of live the turn-based combat of games like this, and if that's what the devs want to create, then let them. I think they meant some of us love the turn-based combat, or some love the whatever. Moving on. They shouldn't have to create another playing method for other people. There are ARPGs out there, play those. To which Visual Fidelity responds, You are missing the point. I didn't say eliminate it. Obviously many enjoy it, but on the flip side, many do not. Having both options would allow a wider audience to enjoy the title. It's why many RPGs have abandoned it. God, this is, I think, the most pussy response you could ever give to something like this. You can tell he wasn't expecting his dog shit take to go so viral, and now he's trying to backpedal. But like, like, dude, you literally said in the original tweet, Turn-based combat ruins games. That's how this started. But now you're like, oh, I didn't say eliminate turn-based combat. Yeah, guys, a human turd always ruins a Chipotle bowl, but that doesn't mean I said they should stop putting turds in Chipotle bowls. All I said was this aspect of a product ruins it. Why would you think I said it should be eliminated? Where would you ever get that impression of me? But also, extra comedy here. Look, look at this screenshot again. Mr. Doofus says he never said that turn-based combat should be eliminated, but neither did the person you're responding to. It's almost like you're trying too hard to backpedal your dog shit opinion. But enough analysis of Mr. Doofus' lack of a spine, let's just take what he's saying here at face value. What you're saying here is that games with turn-based design should also have a real-time design option in order to appeal to a wider audience. Question. Why does every game have to appeal to a wider audience? Why can't turn-based games just be for people who like turn-based games? You said it yourself that a lot of people enjoy turn-based games, so genuinely, why is that a problem? I don't see you advocating for every real-time game to have a turn-based option. Like, why does this only go one way? Callum Cairn says this is like saying FIFA would be much better without the football. <laughs> And then Visual Fidelity responds, no, it's more along the lines of having a simulation or casual play style option, which it has. Okay, so what's your point? 
It's really starting to sound like a skill issue here. Also, today I learned that every game needs both a simulation and a casual play option. So, I can't wait for the casual play option to be added to Arma 3, then that game will finally be playable. Because everyone knows that nobody likes Arma 3 because there's no casual play option. Eden says, I mean, that's like saying we should add turn-based to Spider-Man for those who don't like active combat. Can you imagine how dog shit Spider-Man would actually be if it was turn-based? Because it doesn't suit the style of game. Let game genres stick to their design. To which Visual Fidelity says, I get your point, but real-time combat is not uncommon in RPGs where turn-based in action superhero games is. Like a Dragon should have a real-time combat option, come to think of it. Uh, is, is it. Is it just me, or is this basically just the new version of the whole, like, oh, Souls games need a difficulty setting argument? Like, because basically what you're saying is just boiling down to, I want something else, you know? You want to experience the popular thing, but you don't actually want the popular thing. And that's okay, nobody has to enjoy or want all the popular things. There's plenty of popular things that I don't enjoy or want, and you don't see me advocating for fundamental aspects of those popular things to be changed simply so I can enjoy it. Because maybe those popular things just aren't for me. Maybe, despite your best wishes, there's no such thing as a game for everyone, and that's a good thing. I just love how a bunch of AAA studios were going super gung-ho on making games with insane broad market appeal over the last few years, and we, like, collectively, as a gaming community, and as an entire internet, and as an entire gaming buying base, we all agreed that those kinds of mass broad appeal games were lame, and soulless, and boring. But now that a really unique and truly innovative game comes along, we're back to complaining that it doesn't have enough broad appeal. It's so dumb. Uh, one more from this clown, because I'm getting tired of him and I want to move on, but I just wanted to capture this moment. Uh, Stephanie Ross says, you dropped this with a clown mask, to which Visual Fidelity responds with the Jason Voorhees mask, and says, nah, this is more my mask. The clown one belongs to the overly sensitive folks. Bro, if you're unironically claiming the Jason mask in a Twitter argument about Baldur's Gate 3, I think we know who the sensitive one is. Uh, moving on to someone else, AGS Live says, Do people believe that turn-based gameplay could ever be better than real-time gameplay? In my opinion, it's not even close. You can think Baldur's Gate 3 is better than Spider-Man 2 until you're blue in the face, but no way in hell you think Baldur's Gate 3 got better gameplay. Um, yes, I think Baldur's Gate 3 has better gameplay, and I'm not even blue in the face. There's a difference between thinking a game has better or deeper gameplay, and thinking a game has more immediately satisfying gameplay. Like, you clearly don't find much satisfaction in the gameplay of Baldur's Gate 3, and that's okay. You clearly think Spider-Man 2 has faster and flashier and more immediately satisfying gameplay, and that's okay. But only one of those games will let you progress to the next area by mashing the same two buttons over and over again. And only one of those games will have a story that's unaffected by your actions during gameplay. You can enjoy Spider-Man all you want, I enjoy Spider-Man, but we're talking about which game is more deserving of accolades. And the answer should be really clear there. Like, I'd, I'd play that video by Momo O'Brien again, but at this point I think the only people still watching this are the people who already understand what I'm saying, so I won't waste your time. The Spider-Man fanboys clicked off like seven minutes ago. Uh, Matt quote tweets the stupid visual fidelity take and says, Facts, turn-based is mind-numbing as fuck. Oop. Found the TikTok addict. Always Right Guy also quote tweets Visual Fidelity and says, This is exactly why I couldn't finish any Dragon Age game ever. Something about turn based and point and click games just ruined the entire experience for me. This game would be leaps and bounds better if it had better combat and interaction. Great, so go play something else. That's that's the great thing about game genres. If you don't like this one, go play a different one. Also, I don't think you actually know what interaction means in regards to gameplay. Because, like, the whole reason people like Baldur's Gate 3 so much is because of its insane level of interaction. But it's turn-based, so therefore you think the interaction is bad. Which is really fucking lame. Look, nobody is saying that you have to like turn-based games. No one's even saying you have to like Baldur's Gate 3. 
I've gone most of my life not really liking turn-based games, so I sympathize. But I also recognize the insane amount of effort and love and care that went into Baldur's Gate 3, and that's what's gotten me to step out of my comfort zone and buy it. And if I end up putting it down before other people do, so be it. It's an amazing achievement, and I can't wait to see what this kind of care and love can do in other genres and at other studios. I'm so happy this game exists because of the example it sets for the games to come. I said in my last video, but this game is a fucking moment, and I'm so glad to have been there for it, because I'm a gamer, and I love seeing this medium progress and evolve, and that simply wouldn't happen if people were just constantly putting out mass broad appeal nonsense, or if studios refused to try and evolve a tried and true formula, as opposed to just doing the formula again but with shinier graphics. I'm so fucking happy this game exists because I fucking love games. And if the fact that a turn-based game is getting this much love offends you this much, I seriously recommend you take a look at yourself and reassess what it is you actually like about video games. TLDR skill issue, toodles.